If media and information technology have transformative effects, then they impact not only on us, but also on everything we do. And this includes one of humankind's oldest activities, war and violent conflict. In fact, there's always been a close and intimate relationship between media, information technology and war. Throughout history, violent conflict has always been mediated in one form or another. But at the same time, media and information technology have also impacted on the nature and the conduct of war itself. To get a better grasp of these processes, let's have a look at the evolution of media and information technology across space and time. One of the earliest forms of media were cave paintings, dating back tens of thousands of years. Cave paintings were amongst the earliest forms of media humans used to mediate things that mattered to them. Over time, wall painting gave way to rock and clay tablets, which in turn were supplanted by papyrus and animal skin documents, including scrolls. Interesting to note here are two things. First, these mediums were extremely rare, and each of them needed to be produced by one person or artist by hand. Second is the move from stationary wall paintings to mediums that were movable. But as movable mediums, they could only travel as fast as humans could travel. Famously, we can detect this in the saga of the famous Battle of Marathon in 490 BC, where the ancient Greeks fought the invading Persian army. Now, in order to forewarn the Athenians of the approaching Persian fleet, one soldier was tasked with delivering the message, having to run the 42 kilometers back to Athens. News only traveled as fast as humans moved. This is also reflective of oral cultures, where speech was everything and the dominant sense organ had been the ear. Famous accounts of war, like the Odyssey or the Iliad, were narrated oftentimes in forms of songs or poems, as their rhythm allowed humans to memorize them more easily. The only way to send messages faster than humans could travel was through carrier pigeons, through sound or smoke signals. Something we could find from ancient China, the Roman Empire to the Aztecs and the Incas. In the Middle East, for instance, at the time of the Crusades, Christian knights were able to relay smoke signals from one crusader castle to another, forewarning attacks. Between today's Turkey and Egypt, over a distance of over 1,000 kilometers, this system allowed for these smoke messages to be sent in less than four hours, lightning speed back in those days. The first really big development occurred in 1450 with the invention of the printing press by Johannes Gutenberg. Prior to the printing press, books existed, but they were rare, hugely valuable and of no real relevance to ordinary people because of large-scale illiteracy. These books also took a long time to be written or copied by scribes in monasteries, who oftentimes spent over one year to write or copy a single book. The printing press allowed for the first mechanical reproduction of the same text in volumes that were unprecedented and that made books affordable to more human beings. In 15th century Germany, for instance, the translation of the Bible reached a volume of half a million, a volume unprecedented at the time. Importantly, in the form of the Gutenberg Bible, the printing press liberated the word of the Christian God from the control of the priests and allowed Martin Luther's writings to spread the forces of humanism and the Reformation. The printing press thereby enabled the first profound democratization of the media. And it foreshadowed the emergence of daily newspapers, the first of which started appearing in the mid-17th century. But only through the steam engine of the 19th century did newspapers become viable mass media enterprises.
At the same time, however, the printing press also lurks behind the causes of the English Civil War and the Thirty Years' War between 1618 and 1648. Christianity changed through the printing press and the sword. Regimes shook and fell. The printing press became a major source of nationalism, enabling the standardization of languages and the construction of national identities. The invention of the telegraph in 1794 not only saw the next milestone in the evolution of media technology, but also the beginning of the age of electronic communication. The telegraph, for the first time, divorced transport and communication, breaking the physical link between messenger and message, and allowing information to float at unprecedented speed. And interesting for our purposes, it was built by armies like the first telegraph line that was completed in France on the 16th of July, 1794, where 19 stations across an overall distance of 190 kilometers could now wire news within one hour. The telegraph revolutionized the conduct of war by empowering governments and military high command as we can first witness in May 1855 during the Crimean War. Armies that used the telegraph started gaining tactical, if not strategic, advantages over their adversaries, as it allowed for accelerated mobilization and change of battle tactics. Watson, come here, I want to see you. These were the first spoken words ever transmitted electronically. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell had invented the telephone. For the first time, human voice could travel from one person to another across vast physical distances. The mass communication of information from one person to many in the form of the radio was invented in 1900, when Canadian Reginald Fessenden became the first person to transmit speech by high-frequency radio signal across a distance of 1.6 kilometers. The combination of the telephone and radio airwaves created an immensely powerful communications tool that would change the way armies operated in the field. While the telegraph remained the major medium of the First World War, radio was an ideal instrument not only down on a tactical level but also up on a political level when receivers became widespread among the civilian population as well as among troops, radio technology emerged as a mass media phenomenon. It brought news and information plus the sound of the human voice with an immediacy that extended government's persuasive powers to the masses. It became the propaganda tool of the Second World War, employed to rally public support at home. If the telegraph was the medium of the First World War and radio the medium of the Second World War, then Vietnam became the first television war. Television was invented in the 1930s, but as a technology of mass communication, it only took off in the 1950s. Its revolutionary nature lay in engaging the eyes in addition to the ears, adding the moving images of film to radio broadcasting's immediacy. It since replaced radio and the printing press as the prime medium in warfare. But it still took until the 2003 Iraq war that war became life and instantaneous in its broadcast. The internet was an invention by the US military in the 1980s. It was an internal decentralized communications device designed to enable U.S. forces to continue communicating in case of a nuclear war with the Soviet Union. It enabled networked communications through emails that no longer depended on a centralized communication station, but that instead connected everyone with everyone. After the Cold War, this closed system was turned over to the public. In combination with personal computers becoming a commodity affordable to the average citizen, 
it became what we now call Web 1.0, a limited early version of the Internet. By 2002, in its latest installment, Web 2.0, emerged and with it the interactive digital World Wide Web as we know it today. It no longer just connects computers, but tablets, smartphones, cities and infrastructures. In short, it ushered the hypermedia digital environment that has come to encompass our lives like no other medium before. This animated snapshot drives home the striking transformation of media and communication technologies across history. From early cave paintings via the printing press to Web 2.0, the dimensions of space and time have become steadily eroded until they finally collapsed. What used to be geographically confined has become interconnected. What used to be local has become globally accessible. And what used to be hampered by transmission time has become instantaneous. It is the ubiquity, interconnectivity and instantaneity that best characterizes the nature of the global media landscape of our time. 